Hey there, my name is Colleen Fazio. I'm a guitar amplifier repair tech and builder in Los Angeles. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make sure there's no voltage present in your amp by discharging the filter capacitors. And this is to make sure that the amp is safe to work on and there's no chance of getting a shock. If you are uncomfortable in any way working on an amp where voltage might be present, it's best to just take the amp to a qualified repair technician. So what is a filter capacitor? Like the name suggests, it filters out noise after the rectifier stage. Um, right here is the rectifier tube on this champ schematic. It converts the wall AC to DC, which will be used in the amp. So after that, we have the filter capacitors, one, two, three, and these here are the voltage dropping resistors. If a filter cap is bad, you may hear hum, which is because there is DC ripple present. They may be located on the circuit board near the power transformer, and on this champ layout, I'll show you these are the three filter capacitors. Here's the power transformer. Um, these are the three caps that I had highlighted in this schematic previously. So now I'm gonna show you how to measure DC volts with our multimeter. We're gonna turn it on to the DC voltage setting. The other volt setting is to measure AC. And we're gonna take our black probe. This is the probe that needs to be grounded. And the way I like to do that is using an alligator clip. Clip one end to ground, and here I just have it clipped to this screw that the power cord is grounded to. And then uh, the other end we clip to our black probe. And this is so that we don't have to hold both the black and red probes in our hand. It keeps the black probe free and then we measure with the red probe. A good rule of thumb when doing this is to keep one hand tucked in your pocket and the other hand is free to make the measurements. And this is because you want to avoid completing a circuit with your body because there is a possibility that if you get shocked, the current could flow through you. So if you have a vintage amp that hasn't been powered on in like decades, it's probably safe to assume there's no voltage inside there, but it's always, always a good idea to check. You never want to assume anything when it comes to voltage. So for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna turn the amp on and show you the high voltage measurements on these caps. So we're gonna take the black probe of our meter and attach it to ground. And then with our red probe, we're gonna touch it to the positive ends of the capacitor. And as you can see, there's a little negative sign with an arrow pointing this way. So we know these ends are the negative ends. And then these ends must be the positive. And then on these caps, it's clearly shown which end is positive. So here we go. We've got about 452 volts. Again, 452, 457. So yeah, that's some pretty high voltage right there. So I'm gonna show you what happens when we turn the amp off. We can see the voltage draining from the caps. And to expedite this process, I'm gonna send all of the remaining voltage to ground through a resistor. So I'm going to use this 470 ohm resistor. You can use like anywhere from a 100 ohm to 1K, whatever you got. Um, and then with an alligator clip, we attach one end of the resistor to ground, which is right here. And then with the other end of the resistor, we're just going to touch on the positive terminals of the caps for a few seconds. So to be extra safe, we're going to take one more measurement on the positive ends just to make sure we read close to zero volts. And yeah, we've got 0.6, which is essentially zero. So the amp is safe to work on. Hey y'all, on my bench today, I have a Silverface Twin Reverb. It's mostly original. The output tubes are the main problem. You can see this amp has been very well loved over the years. I'll probably try and fix some of the cosmetic issues after we're done restoring the amp. So yeah, you can see all of the filter caps are original, some are starting to leak. 
So we'll be replacing those for sure. Um, this power transformer and output transformer are both stamped for 1970. The choke and the reverb transformer are both stamped for 71. So this amp is a 1971. That is confirmed by the date written on the inside, April 26, 1971. Both of these bias caps are going to be replaced. The screen resistors on the output tube sockets will also be changed. I'll also be replacing the three prong cord as it's starting to disintegrate. And then after that, I'll service the amp and then test it and see if there's anything else that needs to be done. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the power cord, just get it out of the way. And I'm just gonna go ahead while I'm here and replace these two bias caps. I'm gonna replace them each with a FNT, 100 microfarad at 100 volts. Another thing I'm gonna do is add a ground lug to one of these transformer bolts just to make um, a bit better ground connection. So some of you may be wondering why I am leaving the cathode bypass caps in. A lot of the times we change those as part of the restoration process. But this amp is really sentimental to my client and I think it'd be nice to leave it as original as possible uh, so that he can enjoy it for what it is, really get the full experience. And you know, once these caps are, you know, any coupling caps, plate resistors, etc. Whenever that stuff starts going bad, certainly will be the time to change those parts out. But I think for now it sounds really good and I'm gonna leave it as is. All right, now for the cosmetic part, I'm going to put on a new handle. All right, I've got this baby all clamped up. I'm just trying to re-glue some of the structural cracks just so this amp doesn't completely fall apart. And I will be gluing down the Tolex that's ripped in the large amounts like this. I'm gonna leave some of the other smaller tears, you know, to keep the patina charm, um, but I don't want these to continue to peel, so I'm just gonna glue that down. So um, we'll be, you know, restoring the amp, the filter caps original, we'll be replacing that. Um, and then we'll also be putting the amp into a brand new cabinet uh, with a new speaker. The front panel hasn't been physically modified, but the volume control has now become the master volume. And on the back here, you'll see that the back panel has been modified and two controls have been added. This control becomes the gain and this control is like the mid presence type thing. And now for the circuit. Um, so pretty much what I'm gonna do is just unhook everything that doesn't belong or is not stock and take it out. And then I'm just going to rebuild using the original parts, except for the bypass caps probably, and just make it match the champ schematic. Here are the two 68K grid stoppers on the schematic. And then here they are shown on the layout. Basically the grid stopper resistors block any sort of impurities like radio frequency, oscillation, any other, you know, types of noise that we don't want entering the first gain stage of the amp because that would taint the guitar signal or introduce noise, which would be further amplified down the line. All right, so now I'm going to add two 68K resistors one each to this side, one each to that side, basically one coming from each input jack. Now what I'm going to do is remove the input jacks so I can access them better and then I'll have to run the wires from uh, each tip of the input jack to each corresponding grid stopper resistor.
All right, and just to confirm, this wire goes to pin three, which is the cathode of V1A. And before I forget, I'm going to run the wire from here to pin two, which is the grid of V1A. So I like to use Rob Robinette's two bias calculator. Basically what you do is over here, you choose the type of output tube. It's a 6V6 GT tube. And then you enter the plate to cathode voltage measurement, which we got 362.2 volts. And then we come over here and click calculate. Now we scroll down here to the tube dissipation using cathode resistor voltage drop. Enter number of tubes that share a cathode resistor. There's just one, one output tube. And then the voltage across the cathode resistor is 25.48 volts. All right, so then it calculates that the plate dissipation per the tube is 132.1%, which is very high. All right, so I've installed the 1K resistor for the output tube's cathode, and that is all we gotta do. Um, I've serviced the amp already, cleaned all the pots, jack switches, cleaned and tightened the tube sockets, and all that good stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and install the new speaker and the new cabinet. I'm going to be using a warehouse G10C for my customer's request. Hello, I'm very excited to show you my repair of this incredible Premier 76 amp. These were produced by Multivox, and I believe this is one of the early 50s models. This is the control panel on top, and it's separate from the rest of the amp. And then this is the speaker cabinet. The speaker that's in there now is a Jensen Alnico 5, and it's dated for May of 1950. These amps were used for guitar, accordion, harmonica. These knobs are absolutely incredible. I love the colors, the textures, everything about them. So it is a two channel amp. Here's the mic input with volume and treble and then the instrument input, which has volume and then a tone control that shows bass and treble. Here's the tremolo controls. We're going to have to clean all these sockets, tighten all the sockets. And then here is where the input jacks are, the on and off switch. And actually this is backwards. It's currently in the off position, even though it says on. So I'm just gonna flip that around. And then this is for a foot switch for the tremolo. And then here is the speaker cabinet. You can hear how sensitive the controls are. We'll definitely need a deep service. Now that the new filter caps are installed and glued down, I'm just going to install the dropping resistors and hook everything back up. I'm gonna move on to the tremolo circuit. This type of tremolo circuit is called a coal pits oscillator. It uses an inductor in the circuit. So I notice that this 0.1 cap coming from this junction off of the inductor uh, the other side of this point one, I unsoldered it, but it goes to these resistors here, which are attached to the grid of the tremolo tube, and it's supposed to go to the plate. I clipped this side of the cap to the plate junction. <laughs> still no 
tremolo. My next guess is that one of these caps in the tremolo circuit are leaky. Uh, this one seems like it's been replaced. I'm going to test it anyways, but a lot of the caps are underneath the board, so they are kind of difficult to get to. Um, I'm just going to try and test them with the ESR just to see if there's anything that's like obviously leaky. I have removed two. Both of these caps connected to the plate of the tremolo tube. Um, I'm referring to it as V4B, even though the schematic is V4A. The, the two sides of the tubes are just swapped. So anyways, this point two cap went from the plate of that tube to the junction where this resistor and this point one cap had met. So my guess is somebody had tried to replace this cap with this one and they had just wired it incorrectly. So that is one of the problems. I am going to replace both of these. There's like one or two more original caps in here that I'm going to remove and test and most likely ultimately change. All right, so now everything is pretty much finished. So I have serviced the amp, which includes, as you know, cleaning the pots, jacks, switches, and cleaning and tightening the tube sockets. I also got some new hardware for uh, the wood panels because the old hardware was stripped and was causing some rattling. Um, I also got new hardware for the hinges as well because those were rattling pretty badly. I also ended up having to mellow out the tremolo a bit just because... Um, it was thumping when the intensity was all the way up, so I just had to dial it back a tiny bit. I should also mention I did flip the power switch into the correct position. So I will start by demoing the mic channel. So we have a 6AU6 preamp tube, a 6V6 output tube, and a 6X5 rectifier. So the customer complaint is that there's some weird crackle going on. Um, the power cord is also two-prong. I will be evaluating the originality of the amp. First, I want to diagnose the problem, which is basically some weird crackling going on. This amp is indeed all original. You can tell it's a really simple circuit. It's pretty dang clean in there. And now I'm just gonna clean the pots and then we will reevaluate. So despite this obvious soldering problem on the power tube, the amp still crackles really bad around the preamp tube. And I found that pin six of this tube socket is actually bad in general. When I wiggle the wire like this, you can see that it open and closes just like that. So it's making connection, no connection, essentially. So in order to fix that reliably, I'm going to have to replace the entire preamp tube socket. Okay, so I replaced the two filter caps. They are glued down with silicone. And then the power tube cathode bypass cap. Look who's here to check on me. So now I'll just show you a couple of the most common types of fuse holders. So on this champ, which I have unplugged by the way, they have these fuse holders, which you just push up and twist, and the fuse comes out. And then to reinstall it, again, you just push and twist the opposite way. Now on a lot of Marshalls, you see the types of fuse holders that you have to unscrew with a flathead. So what you do is you just kind of push in and turn, and then just unscrew it. and then it comes right out. And then to put it back in, 
We just do the same thing. But you don't want to over tighten it because you definitely don't want to strip the fuse holder. And that's all it takes. So now I'd like to talk about the difference between a regular fast blow fuse and a slow blow fuse. So this is what the fast blow looks like. It's just like a single strand. And then the slow blow fuse looks to be more wound like this. So the main difference between these fuses is the fast blow will blow instantaneously with a surge of current and the slow blow takes a little bit longer. I have an amp here on my bench that I'm really excited to document my repair of as it's a very special amp. Um, it, it's in all original condition and cosmetically it's in beautiful shape. The amp is a circa 1940 Gibson EH-185. So the cabinet is in great shape. We've got the original handle, beautiful pinstriping down the front. The Tolex is in very good shape um, for being from 1940. There's a little wear here, but that's about it. We still have the pretty Gibson hardware here. Yeah, I mean, this is really special. And then coming in from the back here, we have the amplifier itself. Two prong power cord still, we'll be changing that. I mean, the control panel is like flawless. So we can see it's got a mic channel and an instrument channel, two inputs for the instrument. So you can see the amp just lifts out of the cabinet like so. And then on the inside, we've got the speaker, original speaker. We've got three 6SQ7 preamp tubes. We've got a 6N7, which I believe is the phase inverter. Output tubes are a pair of 6L6s, and then we've got a 5U4 rectifier. So here's an up close of some of the hardware, the handles. The paint is starting to wear a little bit, but not terribly. It's so cool. Now, let's take a look inside. Wow, I mean, completely original. So obviously I'm gonna be changing these two caps and this cap. Um, I have not tested the amp yet because I don't even wanna turn it on. A lot of the times I would turn it on with the Variac um, but in this case, I'm just going to immediately change these filter caps and then reevaluate. It's probably going to need these bypass caps as well. You can see there's some leakage happening there. But yeah, I mean, this is a true treasure. I am honored to work on this piece and excited to get into it. So uh, here we go. All right, so I have unscrewed the caps so we can get a closer look. Looks like um, each one is a 20 and a 10 microfarad. Since, you know, the amp already has some mounting holes, I think what I'll do is install some terminal strips for the new caps. I'm gonna be using F and T's. Just to recap what I've done here, we've got one, we've got both caps grounded at this point. The 10 microfarad goes to the preamp tube plates and the 22 goes to the phase inverter plate. So that's it for the preamp filter caps. 
And now moving on to the first filter stage, which attaches directly to the rectifier, and then the second filter stage, which connects to the screens of the 6L6 output tubes. Changing the plate resistor resulted in no change to the voltage. So my next step is going to be changing the two coupling caps to the power tubes because um, they are leaking voltage anyways. So I will be changing them anyways. It's possible that this one is bringing down the voltage. There's no longer any crackling on the microphone volume control. And just to verify, I'm going to measure zero volts. So that issue now has also been solved. All right, I believe that is all the work that needs to be done on this amp for now, so let's hear it on both the instrument channel and then follow it up with the mic channel. Mm -hmm. 